I have to say that's the gift of these last years, like what I feel the gift of translation was and what the gift of a play was and why working in multiple projects made me write this collection, how they facilitated it, which is back to identity. I literally, you know, there's a camera here now, but like, and I, you know, but it's not here to me, you know, but I'm aware of it. But literally when I went to the public the first time, I think they were like terrified that I wouldn't be able to do the most basic promotion for the play. Because all they were asking me, this is way before we heard, like a, a season before the play, just to make a little promo thing, but they couldn't, they said like, just look in the camera and say like, hi, I'm Nathan Englander and I'm a playwright. You know, and I literally was like, and I'm, I just, we had to do like 74 takes and they're like, it's very simple. You know, and I want to say like, I get, in, I do, I interview, I'm so happy to talk to people about what I do but as a fiction writer. Like the idea of looking into a camera for someone to film and to say like, I'm a player, I just couldn't get the word, I just cut it off again. Like it seemed so false. And, and the notion is that idea of like, that there I was, you know, translating, but I did not identify as a translator. I didn't, you know, I knew my own translators, the, the ones that I'd gotten to meet on my travels or, who, you know, or the questions from around the world. But that, that notion of like not having any reference points, like working without a net again and not even feeling the identity in that same way where I feel like I'm not a playwright, but back to that, I'm writing a play. I must, by debt, like literally, like simply sitting with a very not too complicated philosophical question. You know, there is a play in front of me. I'm, you know, an actor is reading from like, who, if you, who wrote the play like I did, then what must, it's like a, you know, very simple three part proof, I guess, but like I couldn't, you know, I was once again wrestling, it reminded me of what it felt like to be writing The 27th Man, like that first, you know, grown up story for me, adult story makes it sound like porn, but my first grown up, you know, adult fiction, but sort of like being in my room in New York, you know, and writing and thinking like no one's ever going to see this, like, you know, what is, it just reminded me once again as I said, at like this age, you know, now in my 40s, like what it is to sit again and be like, I'm translating, I must be a translator. I am playwriting, I must be by virtue. And then recognizing both how much it does matter to be able to accept that and how, you know, and how ethereal and unimportant the whole thing is. But yes, to, to, have, to have suddenly lived with two new identities, you know, there I was in Jerusalem last month, they're all like, as long as you're here, like, can you do a translation? Pat you know, like, Suddenly I'm sitting there as a translator or sitting on stage with, you know, like Ron Rifkin, our actor, and Barry Edelstein, you know, like sitting suddenly there, I'm there as, you're the actor, you're the director, I guess this is playwright chair, you know. So for me that was a huge, like a huge, huge gift at this point in life, you know, both the identity thing and I also have to say, you know, back to taking time away from writing, it was also getting to learn lessons that I would never take the time, you know, you know, right? protect the writing time, protect the writing time. Well, there I am translating the Haggadah, you know, for Passover, which is the story of Exodus, which is open in the hallway out here, just oddly. The Bible is open to that, you know, but, uh, but you know, literally to just sit there with a word or a phrase and spend, I don't have, you know, I just, I work hard. I used to do that and surely did that with the novel, and I'm fine if that's what the work needs. But in general, I will try now not to spend a day on a word or two days thinking of what this phrase means, you know, and that idea like to rethink what does a word mean, you know, is it's, it's actual meaning, you know, like there's so many meanings to, you know, we all, you know, everyone says like a word has a meaning. Well, it has a different meaning to almost every word has a slightly different meaning to everyone, you know, in a very strange you know, like that idea, we're out in the Midwest, like mountain is much lower to me than if you grow up in the Rockies, you know what I'm saying? Like, anyway, but, you know, that idea, and the same with the play, like maybe the play is the, the easier example to explain, but, but you spend all these years, you know, I get very mad when, you know, or not very mad, I could care less about being mad about it, but I'm just saying, like, to me, when I think of, like, bad teacherly advice that's well-meaning, like when you're, young writers are told, you know, dialogue is not, you know, that's not how we, it's not how we speak. You know, written dialogue, that's not how we speak. Like, it is how we speak. It's exactly how we speak, meaning our brain, you know, like, no, it's not the words you would use if you were speaking to someone, but if you're using words that are symbols on a page that someone in silence is going to read in their head, like, my words, if you're reading a novel and you're thinking this is dialogue, then that novel's broken. That's a bad, that writer has failed you. Like, my words, when you're reading, you're hearing 
you're hearing people talk in your head. The other point is it's exactly how people speak, but it's how people speak translated into written words that are typed on a page that your brain, that's how your synapses fire. So it's ex it better be exactly how people speak for your brain. You know, in that same way to suddenly work on a play, like I spent so many years working on dialogue, thinking about dialogue, you know, rhythms and repetitions and how we experience it and how literally how the synapses fire, you know, and enough you know, if we're talking about translation, enough magically and wondrously that a translator can take every word of a book I've written, replace it with another word, and someone can hear the same thing in, the, in their brain. You know, that an actor can be reading my story to an audience in Germany, and I'll think, if all goes well, I, I kind of think everyone should laugh right about now. And then, every, you know, like, you know, that's, that's a, and, you know, a whole separate art. But, so this idea of sitting with the play, like, you know, the shortest line of dialogue, I say, like, the punchiest kind of really super tight, you know, Carver kind of line there. If you'd say that on stage, like people's nose will start to bleed. It's like 70 hours, you know what I'm saying? So it, it's just a different, you know, for me, again, at this age to suddenly have to relearn, you know, this is how dialogue works. Like that's gigantic or even, you know, timing, which is, you know, so I had to relearn dialogue, which is, you know, much more pressurized in a play in a different way. You know, I, I don't want to say much more pressurized, but it just functions in a different, time works differently. Time moves more quickly on stage. Or, or you better treat it as it does, or, or time literally stops and you think you're going to die in your seat. You know, like that thing. But in that same way where, like, the subtlety that is not subtlety, that I would say, like, that's how you structure a written story, it's happening in real time. The audience can't control the pacing. So things that are like wildly, that in a story to me would be wildly obvious are not obvious. On, you know. So this idea for me to get to spend these last years through translation and playwriting, rethinking like, what does a word mean? How does a sentence function? How do we talk? How does time move? Like, what are the limits of, back to framing of infinity? Well, now you have a physical framing of space. So that to me also was a giant, you know, back to getting the chance to relearn stuff, to keep feeling like you're reborn. To me, I just feel like I've been in, you know, in an awesome boot camp kind of school for the last years that has, you know, retrained the way I think about everything, which gets back to the idea of like the next book, like now I'm ready to write something, you know? <laughs>